Hello there ladies and gentlemen, I'm Paul TX141 Walsh, welcoming you to an all new World of Warships gameplay today on our channel. In this episode we shall be setting sail for the first time in our newly acquired tier 8 American destroyer known as the Benson. We are not alone today but alongside our good friend Callum in the Japanese equivalent to our own ship, i.e. his Fabuki, and this is a tier 9 domination match on the map Land of Fire. So yes, this is my first ever game that I played in the Benson. And the thought of today is in terms of keeping a positive mindset when the start of the game is a very negative one for your team. The idea of sticking to your game plan and getting down to business. Now let us understand the opening scenario. We are taking a northern spawn. In particular, Canon and I are based in the centre northwest region. The third and final destroyer on our team is based in a mirror position in the northeast, and the enemy team have four destroyers to our three. Now in theory this means that the enemy team can cover more ground at the start with their destroyers and therefore the enemy team as a whole can expand across the map at a faster rate than we can. Or at least have the ability to fight for a lot more ground at the start than we can. And in a domination match this means that their ability to take all three objectives early on is higher than our team's ability. But our opening game strategy as an individual will be to go towards B and to try and gradually contest it. We do not want to be hyper aggressive because we are aware of the number of destroyers that the enemy team may have in the position of B, or heading towards it we should really say. They may send all four, they may send just one, we do not know, but we need to factor for the worst possible scenario that they may send two or three towards B, or A, the two larger objectives. Callum meanwhile is going to make his way gradually towards C but taking the approach that just goes over the northern section of B to provide me with some covering fire and covering torpedo fire as required. Now as we make our way, let us keep in mind that as our ship is stock as well, we're trying to get used to how the Benson is going to play, and the only skill we have on our captain at this point is basic fire and training. Now this means that our reload of our 127mm cannon, of which we have five single firing turrets, is three seconds, which is very nice, much better than the predecessor, i.e. the Mayhem. But, as we have digressed, we can see that B is being captured, A is being captured as well, both by the enemy team, and the enemy carrier is playing a very forceful early hand and is bringing a set of fighters to spot us. Now this is unfortunate, this means we cannot contest B, and it would appear as though there's only one enemy destroyer on B and we would have loved to have gone into a knife fight against it. Something that American destroyers are very well known for, their capacity to take on enemy destroyers at close range. We take down one of the enemy fighters nonetheless, and we start to head back towards our friendly battleships. Two Nagatos, i.e. Japanese battleships, sitting just behind us in the northern sector of the map. As we know that there are going to be a set of dive bombers on their way, and here they come. There's not just one set, it's three. And those dive bombers are going to focus on us. So we open up our anti-aircraft batteries, taking one down straight away, and gradually baiting the dive bombers back towards our battleships so they can provide us with additional anti-aircraft support. One set of dive bombers miss, the second set's on its way in, will they miss as well? Well we've just got to keep wiggling and hopefully they'll miss. A disaster, we got hit and we lost a third of our health. And with some additional fire coming from the smoke screen on B from one of the enemy destroyers, the third set of dive bombers come in, but fortunately for us, these will miss. So, what can we say so far? Well, this has been a very negative opening. All three objectives are in the hands of the enemy. We have taken down a number of enemy aircraft, i.e. three of them, including two dive bombers, but the enemy carrier will just shrug that off. Our teammates, as you can see in the chat on the left-hand side of your screen, not providing any names, but in general, the sentiment of some of our teammates is a very negative one, because, in their opinion, we as destroyers have let the team down. We have not contested the objectives early on. Callum is quite close to sea and is trying to press it with a set of torpedoes or two against the enemy cruisers, either Kutuzov and the Otago. But really, our team is being confined to the northern third of the map, and this means now we have to counter-attack, because if we do not, the enemy team is going to win outright on points very quickly. We can see the enemy team already has a 180 point advantage, and it is only increasing. Callum appears to score some very nice hits against the enemy Kutuzov, leaving him on only 345 HP. And as the Kutuzov triggers its smoke screen here, we do not have to worry about them as much. If they do not get hit by friendly fire that goes into the smoke screen, i.e. from our teammates, then we can just gradually eliminate them with a single salvo of high explosive. 
But our game plan, which we should elaborate from earlier, if we could not take B early on, we would go and support Callum in his push for C. And we can see that two enemy destroyers have really made the case for C, and they are now overextending. So we can see how the enemy team having covered a lot of ground early on has actually in a way become a little bit complacent. Their ships are now starting to move out of position. Their two destroyers that went for sea, Aya Mayhan and Ahatsu Haru, have moved so far forward now, they are out of the coverage of their own cruisers due to the land masses that divide up the region around sea. Meanwhile, by contrast, our team started off in very bad positions. Our cruisers were based off in the northeastern side of the map, our battleships over in the northwest, and the destroyers mixed in between, which meant that a lot of ships could not cover each other effectively. So now the tables are beginning to turn, and the enemy team seems to be so confident in the fact they have three objectives and already have a 340 point lead, which is steadily increasing, that this game is going to be in the bag. Now we eliminate one enemy ship, I believe it is the Kutasov from earlier, while our teammates takes them out. We score the first blood. And now we need to make our way into sea, and we can see that the enemy ships are moving away from the objective. We fire off our two quintuple torpedo tubes based down the centre line, a very nice feature on the Benson compared to the Mayhem, and we trigger our smoke. Not on sea, we're just creeping gradually towards the objective from the centre north. Now the reason we're doing this is to try and make the enemy team think that we've made a mistake with our smoke screen, i.e. that we deployed it too early before we could get on the objective. And also this means that if the enemy destroyers decide to retreat or return to cover their cruisers via sea, we'll be able to catch them off guard. But we take out the enemy Otago with a torpedo. It's quite fortunate, we try to predict that as best as possible. And now we drop some fire on the enemy Hatsuharu, which is sitting stationary at the moment, although well, they now begin to move forward. Callum is also engaging, and the enemy Mayhan is turning away from the Hatsuharu, not able to provide the support that ship needs. We now make our way onto sea, having eliminated the Otago that was defending it, and these two enemy destroyers, either Hatsuhara and the Mayhan, along with the cruiser down in the southeastern corner of the map, cannot cover the objective. We can take this back without taking damage, or even being seen per se, although we are being detected technically. We continue to open fire on the Hatsuhara here, scoring some additional hits, but they are about dead. And we can now begin to switch our fire towards the enemy Mayhan, who is now charging up towards Callum to try and get revenge for the death of the Hatsuhara on the enemy team. We dump in our rounds here, but we can see that the Hatsuhara has scored a number of torpedo hits on Callum, and unfortunately that means he's out of the game. So we are now going to try and avenge him by bringing this back as a destroyer. We take out the Mayhem for what is our second kill. We also capture C, so already we're getting a lot of points on the board, and we're helping to bring this back. We now have one objective. One of our battleships is taking A, as the enemy team seems to have just left A alone completely and focused on the centre of the map. Although they do have one battleship going towards A, but it's not going to get there in time. But regardless, let's just continue looking at our side of the map. With our torpedoes reloaded, we open up on the enemy Colorado, firing a tight spread at first towards them on their recommended path according to the torpedo lead indicator. And we hold back the set and set for a little bit, sorry, second set I should say, a little bit of sibilance there and see what the Colorado is doing. They seem quite oblivious, so we dump in the other set on the recommended path. They may be turning across them, but if we can change their path and cause them to turn bow towards us, this means they can only use two turrets rather than the full four of a broadside towards our friendly ships up in the north. So we're helping out regardless. We do not care for the Colorado. We want to wait, make our way towards B. We have a lot more work to do, as we really need to get the objectives on side. Our team has taken out a number of enemy ships predominantly those based around C, simply because they overextended and were out of position. And we can see here we are going to hit the Colorado with a number of torpedoes. I think it's three if I remember correctly. One, two, three, and one flood caused, picking off a good 20,000 health. So that worked out. We continue to make our way towards B, with a number of enemy ships now scattering towards A, and the Colorado making its own way towards C. The enemy carrier has also been eliminated, most likely by our friendly carrier, so we can see how our teammates have taken advantage of the enemy team's exuberance for the fact they had a very early lead. We turn up towards the enemy Benson that tried to make its way up into the central northern section of the map to try and cut off our battleships with torpedoes most likely, and we are going to intercept them before they can retreat through B. Last thing they probably expected was to have a stock Benson coming charging up towards them from the south. We dump in a good number of rounds here, taking off almost 2,500 health, the five turrets coming in handy here. 
And as the Benson tries to turn across us once again, perhaps to get off a torpedo stream, we fire off our own torpedoes, which are reloaded. I one of our sets were. And we continue to dump in the rounds. Taking the Benson out for what is our third kill. And now we turn away. We must admit that we lost a lot of health in that engagement, now being down to only a quarter of our starting health. This goes to show as well the stock condition of the fact that we do not have as much health as we would in fully upgraded condition is something we need to be cautious of. 12,800 health does not go very far, but we'll make the most of it. But with that Benson eliminated, and the enemy Colorado licking its wounds heading down towards the south, we can just park ourselves up on B at this point, and not worry, we will just take the objective gradually. And how the tables are turning. We've lost a couple of ships at this point, but we can see that as soon as we get this objective, our points accretement will a little bit faster than the enemy team and we can bring this back especially if we eliminate one or two more of the enemy team's ships and with a limited number of ships available to the enemy team now i in nagato the colorado although the colorado is actually dead my apologies our carrier just took it out we're really going to bring this back in hand and win or at least it would seem that way we continue to finish off capturing the flag an enemy hogura is making its way up towards b to reclaim it Although we can see here that our friendly carriers send a number of bombers towards it, two dive bomber squadrons and one torpedo bomber squadron. And even with the defensive fighter in place, those bombers will get through. We decide to throw some long range torpedoes towards the Huguro, putting them on a widespread as that is a highly maneuverable cruiser and we want to try and force them either down a single line of approach, i.e. to come bow on towards us, alternatively to drift into one of the torpedoes. So we get ready to fire off our second set again on the widespread. As we can see the Huguro is drifting left and right very quickly. Reacting to the torpedoes from our carrier's dive bombers, sorry, our carrier's torpedo bombers and the bombs of our carrier's dive bombers. Making a lot of mistakes today as well. It's been a while since I've played World of Warships, physically. And unfortunately our torpedoes miss, but still they have forced the Huguro onto a singular approach and from the cover of our smoke screen, we can open fire with armor piercing onto the broadside of that Huguro and cut them down for their remaining health. With two salvos, and then a third, they are finished. And with the Huguro eliminated and now on four kills, we want to go for a Kraken. Now unfortunately our 9.2 km range torpedoes, even though they are going to drift towards the enemy Nagato, are not going to make it there, as they only have a top speed of 55 knots, carrying over from the top level torpedoes on the Mayhan, the predecessor to the Benson. But we have caused the enemy Nagato to drift in a certain direction, towards our friendly battleships, which means all of our teammates can drop as much fire onto the Nagato as we can. We are hoping to eliminate them through using high explosive here, perhaps even setting a fire. As we make our way out of our smoke screen, unfortunately the enemy bleacher visco spots us, and we start to dump some rounds into them, as it is now them versus the entirety of our team. And we can see with two objectives in hand, the points advantage being in our own, and the fact we've got a lot more ships on our team. This game is concluded, now it's just the case of whether we can get the Kraken or not, or who is going to get the Bleacher Visca kill. We decide to turn away here to avoid being taken down, as the last thing we would really want is to be eliminated right at the end of the match, especially seeing as we played the ship well by comparison with what could have occurred, based on the rather negative start of the match. We just want to survive, and this, this means drifting away from the enemy destroyer for a bit, and not doing any more damage, then so be it. But in the meantime, we will use our torpedo tubes to try and force the Bleacher Visca to only go south rather than go east. We're going to constrict their directionality a little bit more so that way we can try and get a cleaner shot on them. We open up with some more rounds here, getting a shot on their rear facing turret, only knocking it out temporarily. We dump in a couple more rounds. Can we get the Kraken? Hopefully, that salvo is going to hit. Ah, we didn't get it. But still, with the game over, let's just take a look at the post game stats. That was a rather rapid turnaround, and for the victory we picked up 310,716 silver credits, 5,466 experience, and in terms of our battle performance, we dealt 54,951 damage, consisting of 79 target hits for our main batteries, 4 torpedo hits, 4 enemy aircraft shot down, 7 module incapacitations, 4 enemy ships destroyed, rather unfortunate we could not get the Kraken, but so be it, 2 floods caused, and 2 bases captured. Looking at the team score, I must admit when I saw this for the first time, it etched a smile of pride across my face, simply because we came first by comparison to the rest of our team, 
picking up 2,429 base experience, 774 more than second place. This can be primarily attributed to the two base captures we picked up over the course of the match. Looking at our detailed report, we have one key item to note, and that is in terms of the damage we dealt, whereby we practically dealt the same amount of damage with our main batteries as we did with our torpedoes, going to show how we implemented both sets of armament effectively where possible to maximise our damage output. It was not a case that we used one preferably over the other, as we may have in previous matches we have showcased on the channel. Finally, coming to our credits and experience, we can see that after deductions, we walked away with 234,123 silver credits, and our commander was a very happy bunny today, as he walked away with three additional skill points to implement. In conclusion, what can we take away from today? Well, there are two key lessons to be learnt here. The first is more of a side note, and that is if you're in a domination game whereby your team takes the majority, if not all of the objectives at the start of a given match, do not write the game off as an easy victory, as we saw here how the enemy team took all of the objectives straight at the start, but then became overconfident some would say, or at least in my opinion, and started to play with their ships out of position, and eventually this meant that our team could work down the enemy team through a more concentrated effort. And this brings us on to our main point, which is when you have a negative start to a match or in terms of your team's performance, do not let it bring you down, but instead pull out your resources, stick to your game plan, and get ready to strike back. We could have quite easily reacted to the comments made in the chat section when our team were not happy with the performance of our destroyers as a whole, but instead, we kept quiet, we knuckled down, and we got ready to commit, and in doing so we contributed to a very powerful and decisive counter-offensive. And so I've been TX141, and if you've enjoyed this video why not leave a like, comment or subscribe for future World of Warships videos on my channel. But until next time ladies and gentlemen, take care, and fair seas.